Welcome to episode 531 of Salcedo Paranormal. And tonight I'm continuing my review of the complete books of Charles Fort. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is Salcedo Paranormal podbean.com that's s-a-l-s-i-d-o paranormal dot podbean.com always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences whether they're your own or from others that you trust happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them thank you all for listening whether you are here uh, for the live streams on Discord, or you listen on the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting, there you can hear replays of the show every night, uh, two of them at 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm sorry. Yeah, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Time zones, they're hard. Um, and that is right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I'd um, like to thank um, Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing these shows and putting them up on the station, along with the music that you hear there. If you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always uh, share the show with others and rate and review it on your podcast platform of choice. I have um, some books over on Amazon, Paranormal Fiction and Nonfiction that you can uh, also check out over there. Uh, I have a Patreon page, and um, there you'll find one extra episode per month of uh, True Paranormal Stories on the Web. And um, I got to the one for January up there just in time, a few days ago. And uh, so I'll be working on the one for February for this month here, basically, uh, real soon. And um, there's diff four different membership tier levels there. And you get that extra episode on any of those levels. and um, Or you can just do a one-time donation through PayPal. Uh, help is never expected, but always appreciated, especially these days. Um, I have a funny story about that in a little bit. I'll tell you all uh, in regards to this um, the series we're doing here. Um, and uh, so, but yeah, um, just um, there are expenses in doing these shows from equipment to research materials to travel expenses in some cases so that is why um help is always appreciated um so in doing this review of um the complete books of charles fort uh i've been using of course uh, ai software to help with the summar summarizing uh summarizing summarization there's a word um basically i put in the chapter each chapter and get a summary of it from the ai uh, from the one I use uh, lately has been Claude. And so far, um, up until recently, up until today, every chapter always fit in um, in one go, in one, um, basically one summary. And I got to uh, one of the chapters. I don't know if we'll get to it this episode or not. Um, but I got to one of those chapters, and it just, it would not fit. There was no way it was going to fit. And, and then I kept running into the issue, of course, when you just do the free versions of programs you um you only get so many free uses or whatever for every for at a time or for so long then you have to wait for some hours to uh to, to go again and um so today i finally just decided you know what i think i'll be using this from now on for a lot of reviews and um i went ahead and and got the uh <laughs> the pro version of claude um at least for now we'll see if i keep that but um but and then, then I was tonight. I was able to get that whole chapter in um, reviewed and or summarized in one one go. So uh, so yeah, there are expenses in doing these shows, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this is a review of the complete books of Charles Fort. We only have nineteen chapters left to go in um, the last of those books, which is Wild Talents. And, um, of course, what I do is I feed each chapter into the AI to get a summary of it, and then we discuss those summaries. And uh, it's been, overall, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and um, so, yeah, we'll get back to that. Hello, everyone there in the, the channel. I see you all there. Thank you all for being here. Um, but, yeah, so this has been amazing to do this, and I, I'm looking forward to um, 
other books, reviewing other books as well, other uh, ancient texts, and other cases where they're older than even Fort. Um, but just older texts that are basically public domain now. So we'll get right to this here. Um, we are on chapter 10 of, again, uh, Wild Talents, which is the last book in the collection of, of the complete books of Charles Fort that I um, am reviewing here. Funny enough, um, over on uh, Trouble Minds, they recently just did a show, and I was part of it, talking about uh, the book and, and the ideas of Wild Talents. And when that show was done, I was still on uh, the book Low, L-O, exclamation mark. And then um, just finally, last the last recordings we did um, reached this last book, Wild Talents. So um, it's funny that I, I wasn't even there yet, but I, I didn't realize how close I was to getting into this book. But anyway, on to chapter 10. Um, so this chapter, the summary says, this chapter discusses the possibility of werewolves existing despite modern science considering them impossible. It argues that science's understanding of matter and nature is limited, and transformations that seem excuse me, improbable may be, in fact, possible. Uh, it cites examples of strange animal appearances that can't be easily explained, like a lemur showing up in a backyard in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, it speculates on explanations like occult transportation uh, of animals over great distances or humans transforming into animals. Uh, this chapter recounts tales of leopard men in quotation marks and hyena men in uh, also in quotation marks in African tribes uh, and a story from Nigeria of a hyena being traced back to a native village where a man with an identical jaw wound was found dead. And I've heard over over time just researching folklore and accounts of, um, I'm just breaking away from the text for a moment here, I've heard of similar things where these strange creatures or animals, are even animals that look normal, are injured. And then they're chased, and then when they get to, they they um they lose the animal, but then they find a person at one point who has the same injury, basically, which is really odd. Um, anyway, it says it argues that while uh let me see, while we came from lower in quotation marks animals, why couldn't humans sometimes revert back? Uh, other examples given include the sudden appearance of violent wolf-like uh, traits in civilized people, both ordinary citizens and those in positions of power, like judges, lawyers, and police. Uh, it recounts an ape scare on Long Island in 1931, uh, when, um, let's see, where a large unidentified animal was spotted repeatedly. The conclusion expresses a kind of uh, religious vision around embracing humanity's animal nature and uh, reverting to a more primitive state. It also notes that modern physics concepts like quantum uncertainty have practically embraced uh, principles of magic, so beliefs in werewolves and the like can't be easily discounted. So that's where that chapter ends. A lot in there, um, and uh, just things that uh, we sort of talked about here and there, not as much on this show overall, but other shows I've been parts of, again, um, checking on, uh, I guess we kind of have covered it in different accounts of experiences. Uh, yeah, PDG Skinwalker, possibly the original Skinwalker was to wear the skin and turn into that animal. And um, yeah, so it's just a lot of things, especially with the the the, the wound, and then having the, on the animal, and then finding the same one on the person. That is odd, and I, I know I've heard that before in other accounts of um, of experiences way back when. So, but um, and I like that 
I didn't even know that. And of course, this is just me not knowing things, which is happens. Um, I didn't even know that the idea of quantum, the uh, the idea of that word was sort of being used at that point in time in the, in the early 1930s. So unless maybe it wasn't in the AI put it in there, I don't know. I guess I, I don't know that for sure. But um, but yeah, so just this idea of people and or other creatures being able to do things that seem impossible, uh, change into things and change back. That's been around, again, for a long time. Just like the, the chapter says there, I mean, going back to um, Africa and everything. And so anyway, uh, let's move on to the next chapter here. This is um, always amazing to read these summaries and think about these things here. Um, chapter 11, this chapter discusses the idea of uncertainty and unpredictability in science and nature. It argues against the notion that collections of particles or systems as a whole are perfectly predictable, even if individual units are not. Uh, it gives examples <clears throat> excuse me, of how even things assumed to be regular, like human behavior, are ultimately uncertain when looked at at a larger context over time. Um, it recounts strange cases of fires with seemingly supernatural elements. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, like a, a woman re reportedly finding her sister burned to death on an unscorched bed. So here you get into the idea of um, spontaneous human combustion. Or the, the case of the Moultons in Bedford in 1856, where a house fire was followed by uh, dozens of mysterious isolated fires breaking out as um, or on various objects over days. Attempts to provide conventional explanations are unsatisfactory. Other examples given of unexplained fires include at the U.S. Secretary of War's desk in 1889. Wow. Simultaneous fires in different U.K. government departments in 1920. Fires at the Ottoman War Office archives in 1920. And the death by burning of uh, uh, J. Temple Thurston. J., um, so that's abbreviation, I guess. Um, in his locked room in 1919 with no source of the fire found. Uh, the text argues for a view of our existence as an organism in which um, prior, er, positivizing and negativizing manifestations or conflicts are metabolic, uh, neither fully predictable nor chaotic. Strange occurrences suggest limitations in uh, science's current conceptions of nature and matter. So um, there you get back to the whole thing with fires breaking out uh, in, in different ways, and in, in unusual ways, and um, giving examples of, of fires like that happening um, going back to the 1800s. So... The I wonder what the um, the government office is there. Uh, that, that's really odd. I, I wonder if sort of that those sort of things get covered up over time, and that's why we don't hear about it so much. But I wonder how much paranormal or unexplained activity happens in um, government or military locations that we just never hear about because they're not supposed to be known to the public, and then we just. Uh, we never hear about it. So, but um, the fires, that's, that's really always been a thing that pops up here and there. Um, and in some cases, it could be different factors, but, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in the chat there, um, Mike, hello there, Mike. Uh, the, the man bear pig lives, lives down there. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway. Just um, the fires is, is always something that that um, has just been really odd. You see that in Poltergeist case. You see that just in in all kinds of odd 
experiences. So, um, but yeah, let me see here. Let me go back to the next chapter here and we'll go on. Try to get through at least a few more today. A um, couple more today. Chapter 12. This chapter examines several mysterious cases of death by burning or uh, shooting where the physical evidence is perplexing or unexplained by conventional means. Uh, it recounts the story of, again, this uh, Thurston, found uh, burned to death in 1919 in an otherwise, otherwise untouched locked room with burns on his body but clothes un or undamaged. It questions the um, adequacy of labeling his death as due to inhaling smoke. Other cases include uh, a Captain Calvacross, Kava, I'm not sure if that's right or if that messed up, but either way, a captain was found shot dead in 1872 with no bullet holes in his clothes. Uh, a man named Carl Gro uh, Gross, G-R-O-S, found dead with uh, body wounds but no corresponding holes in clothes. A 1912 case of a bullet wound with no clothes damage. Uh, the 1929 locked room murder of Isidore Fink. I feel, like, I feel like I've heard that name before. Uh, shot dead inside a bolted laundry room with cash register untouched. Police could not explain how the killer entered or exited. Uh, this chapter argues that just as mysterious fires and other phenomena may uh, violate expectations, so too may uh, wounding and deaths defy uh, conventional explanations. It sees many stories revised or per poorly authored, in uh, quotation marks there, to cover inexplicable aspects. Uh, but strangeness remains. Uh, challenging science and reason. So that's that chapter. The clothes, I might, I wonder how often, and this is just odd, but the people could have been killed maybe when they were not wearing those clothes and then dressed in those clothes. But then it depends on the circumstances, I would guess, how long in between the last sighting of the person and when they were found dead. Um, all kinds of circumstances there. So it's it's really odd that that's the case, but also there could be some explanations there. But if, if I don't know, I guess we would have to know all the details of each case, and that's going to be hard to do. Um, PDG in the chat says, was it the Bell Witch House that kept starting on fire, 1800s? I don't remember that one starting on fire. There was a lot of other stuff going on there. But I don't remember fire being a part of that case. Um, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, so I don't know for sure on that one. Uh, that may be something. I can't remember. I feel like we, I did a show on that topic a while ago, but then I can't remember now. may have to look back at that. If we haven't done one on that, then that's something um, I think I think I did uh, at one point. But um, anyway, I'll check, and if we haven't, then I'll do a show on that at some point. Um, but let me see here. Moving back to the text here, uh, we'll get to chapter, uh, once I find out what chapter it is, chapter 13? Yeah, 13. Okay, this chapter uh, examines numerous strange and inexplicable cases of mysterious fires, and people mysteriously burned to death. It argues that while individual fires may uh, often be explained away, the sheer number of unexplained cases suggests there are phenomena science cannot currently explain. Uh, cases discussed in include the 1908 case of Wilhelmina Dewar, Dewar? I'm not sure, D-W-A-R, supposedly found burned to death on an unscorched bed, a story first told, then recanted under pressure at the inquest. 
and an inquest. Uh, fires centered around certain people, especially young girls, such as the uh, case of Jenny Bramwell in Canada in 1891. Uh, people suddenly bursting into flames with no apparent cause or burns, only on their body and not their clothes, such as uh, Lily White in the West Indies in 1929. Uh, body strangely burned uh, with no burns on the surrounding area, such as the 1869 case reported by Dr. Bertol, Bertoli? No, Bertol, or the 1916 New Jersey case of uh, Lillian Green. The uh, chapter speculates on the origins of strange fire-related phenomena and uh, latent human abilities that might have served evolutionary purposes in the past. Uh, such as starting fires by breathing. It sees the phenomena as evidence of the limits of scientific knowledge about nature and the human body. That one is amazing because how, how often throughout mythology and, and folklore and um, just all those kinds of story, stories that are said to be fiction, how often does, does fire come up as, uh, or does the ability to generate fire come up in those kinds of stories. Um, so just really odd. And this is sort of, again, going back to that show that um, I did a little while back with uh, Michael Strange over on Trouble Minds. Um, the idea that humans in the past had abilities that were used to survive, and then over time we sort of lost them and or the um, possibly... We're told that we just didn't have them by whoever. Pick, it, pick your your authority of any kind, and um, and so and then we just forgot how to use them. But then every so often they just sort of appear again. And in some cases, unfortunately, they appear in ways where the person doesn't even know it's going to happen. Um, and then you get other stories where people do know, and there's people that appear to be able to control these abilities, and of course. Those accounts are just written off as impossible, or um, the people are faking, or just all kinds of things, all kinds of um, re basically reasons why that can't be possible. Uh, Derek in the chat, the locked room ones could be a teleporter. Yeah, yep, we got a we got a jumper. Yeah, um, and uh, sounds like. Uh, Will from Stranger Things tied to the hive mind of the Upside Down. So burning the vines ended up burning him. Wow, yeah, I forgot about that. Or just a classic voodoo doll, yeah. Um, hard to tell. Uh, PDG says, in the chat says, amazing when that happens. Scene picks up a lady who burned, but her slipper was untouched. Yeah, there's been a lot of that whole human combustion um, event there is just really odd and sad, but also just really odd how those things can happen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to be where we leave off with um, the, the summaries in this episode here. But um, it just does seem like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if, there, if people did have abilities way back when and to help them get by and um, and sort of defend themselves, and that's um, then we just sort of over time, due to maybe in a lot of cases uh, we just don't need the the powers as much, or at least we're told that that's why that happens. But we are out of time. Um, thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care. <laughs>